everybody and welcome back to our brute forcer and in the previous video all we did was specify the page URL which needs to be correct in order for this to work and we also prompted the user for the actual username. We also implemented a brute force function or we didn't implement it we only called it and right now we want to implement that function for our program. So let us go up here we can implement it right here def brute force the actual uh, things that we parse is the username and the URL. So make sure to add the two dots. And what we want to do right now is only iterate over these passwords in our list. So for password, in the passwords file that we opened, so for password in passwords, first of all, if you notice right here, we want to strip the password of anything that might present us a problem. So right here, for example, this new line, then slash error, and anything basically that could present the problem. So we'll just use the function strip on our passwords in order to do that. Basically, we did it a bunch of times, so nothing really there to explain. We will just redo the password variable to be equal to password dot strip. So next thing we want to do is we can just print right here the passwords that we are currently trying. So right now we can just print right here trying to brute force with password and then we want to add the password itself. So we will just add space and then plus and we will concat the string of the password itself. Now the next thing is the most important thing for this program is to actually create a dictionary so we can just call it data underscore dictionary so you can call it anything you want and dictionary is basically uh, referred to with these curvy brackets right here so it is not the same for the list or it is not the same for the normal brackets this is how we can create a dictionary now what dictionary will take is the key and the value and I will just show you once again as we show in as we saw in the previous video we are interested in these usernames and passwords or basically name fields for our input fields on the page itself we are also interested in the name for the actual submit button which is this login button right here so we need to parse all of that to our actual uh, brute forcer or our actual dictionary so let us do that right here I'll just lower it so we can see both of these screens we can see the HTML code and we can also see the Kali Linux. So right here, first of all, let us parse the actual usernames is that is what comes first. We know that the name of the name field of the username field is just same username. So just specify right here username. And in order to divide the key and the value, you need to specify two dots right here and parse the actual next value. So username is the actual field with the name username simple as that. Now let me just explain what this actually does right here. It will search for the field under the name username which is this field right here and it will paste to that field this variable username that we created at the beginning of our program right here. We also parsed it to our function so it will just switch it right here. The same we need to do for the password as well as we can see the name for the password field is just password so make sure to first of all separate by comma then in between double quotes once again password and then two dots and the actual variable that we are parsing which is the password variable and the last thing we need to specify is the actual button itself now the actual thing that we are do interested in is the class and the name of the button itself the name is the first thing that we specify right here which is login under the double quotes then two dots and we can see that the button is type submit and class submit so we want to specify also between the double quotes submit since this is not an actual variable that we specified in our program we need to pass, parse both of these values in the actual double quotes so once you do that basically most of our job is already done all we need to do is forward this dictionary to the actual page itself in order to do that we need to perform a post request which the requests library will help us do so go next line and what we want to do is create a response and the response will equal this response valuable we catch the actual uh, requests dot 
post. And this post actual function right here will for our case take two inputs or two arguments to this function. One of them will be the URL where we are posting, which in our case is the just URL or the page URL, however you want to call it right here. So to this URL, we want to paste data and the data is equal to the our dictionary. So data underscore dictionary. Now it is simple to understand. Basically we are uh, trying to connect to this page and parsing this data where it needs to parse it. It is simple as that. The Python basically does uh, or does most of the things for us. All we have to do is specify these two lines and these two lines are something that will change for every page you actually brute force. Well, not really these two, actually only this line is something that you want to change if you want to brute force a different page. Everything else can be the same. Of course, you can also, you need to also change the link itself, but that is common sense. So what we want to do right now is check for the actual response once the username and password is incorrect. So you can see once we tried in the previous video, we get this login failed uh, string printed to the screen. Now we will use that string in order to be able to actually uh, realize once we got the password right and once we got the password wrong. So in order to do that, we can just type here if and then the string of login failed. Now make sure to specify the same letters, otherwise this will not work. So it has to be the same. The best thing to do is to copy and paste it. And then if login failed is in the response variable dot content, content, now this actual response variable will take an actual element of the content and it will check whether this string right here is in this content of our response. We sent a post request and we are checking back the response. If it is there, all we want to do is pass to the next password. If it isn't there, that means that we actually got the password correct and that we managed to log in. So we want to proceed to print, whoops, print right here with the plus username and we can do something like this plus the actual username variable that is currently in this part of iteration and we also want to do with the password itself password plus password variable and we can just exit the program once we get the username and the password. There is no really need to continue brute forcing. So let us try out our program. Hopefully it will work right now. And if we chmod it in order to be able to run it and we run our brute forcer, enter username for specified page. Now we can actually try with a wrong username first of all since let us specify root to be and we can see right here trying to brute force with password hello trying to brute force through this nothing really worked since we used the wrong username but let us use a real username which will be the username admin and we can see once it reaches the password in our list it prints out username admin password admin and it also quits the program now let me just check why do we get one last time trying to brute force with password. So let us fix that. Nano brute forcer .py. Okay, I think I know what the problem is. In our password list.txt, we actually have an empty uh, line, I believe. So let us try it once again with a wrong password. Now this is not really something important. It is rather just for it to look better. As we can see, we managed to get rid of it. And also what we want to add to our brute forcer is in case it doesn't really find the actual password in this list, we just want to print at the end of this program. Let us open square brackets to exclamation marks. Uh, password isn't is not in this list. And we can just print that. Let us see how that will work. Root. And we can see everything works perfectly. Once we specify the actual list and the wrong username, 
we don't get the password and once we specify the actual real username we get password as the correct password for that website. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!